The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now Let's go to uh, Ilka in uh, Boston. Ilka, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Steve, seriously, you guys are unbelievable. You are doing wonders for all the traders. Well, thanks. We appreciate that. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, all you wonderful money masters and treasure hunters. Welcome to the April 8th, marvelous Monday edition of today's opening bell on the Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and thanks so much for joining me, folks. I absolutely treasure your presence here today, and my outcome, as always, is to help you to become a better money master and to provide you with the tools that each of us need in order to lead an inspired life, because leading an inspired life, folks, that is what it's all about. So let's go take a look at one of our tools. This is the tool I call Help Yourself by Helping Others. You know, select with care the area of your livelihood, your career, and make certain that you love what it is that you do. For when you love your work and you combine this with the belief that you can help others, your life and your work can take on a special meaning with deep significance. You know, as one who gives joyously and thankfully, as one who is ever ready to assist another, you may be much more likely to be successful than the person who simply works to earn a living. And always remember, the more one works and plants, that's right, the more one can harvest. Now, the more good one can do, the more success one can achieve. Service to others is the creative process that releases energy which cannot, which which can which can manifest itself in many, many ways and bring really deep, beautiful meaning into your life. You know, success takes many forms. Wealth and fame are only one kind of success. Perhaps you have the talent to help those who seem to have no talent. Every act of helping is a way of saying yes to life. Help yourself, folks, by helping others out there, and you will have a great day. Better yet, you will have a great life. Let's go take a look at these markets out here. What a wild ride on Friday it was. Right now, Dow Futures up about 15. They should uh, open up, I don't know, about eight points right now. S&P Futures up about uh, three. Uh, the S&P should open up about two and a half. The S&P Futures trade at 15, 49, 15. NASDAQ Futures up uh, six points. Uh, Russell 2000 up about five. King Dollar up about eight ticks right now. Euro is uh, flat. The uh, Japanese yen strong. Uh, uh, out there, actually, uh, we'll go take a look at uh, that. You've got the uh, British pound uh, moving, the British pound breaking out on uh, Friday. Uh, we have gold here. Gold's back uh, 270 right now, up uh, trading at 1573. Silver back eight pennies out at 2714. Light Swede crude up 28 ticks out at $93. And a couple of cents out there across the uh, pond. You had the uh, Hang Seng pretty much flat last night, down eight points. The Shanghai off 14. That was off six tenths of a percent. The Nikkei continuing its ascent higher to Mount Fuji. That's right. It's not going to Mount Everest. Head to Mount Fuji. That's up at that uh, was up 358 points, almost another three percent. We'll peek in on that stock chart as well over in Germany right now. The DAX is up 12 points, so pretty flat session out there. FTSE up 17, up about a quarter of a percent. Our call in number is 877-927-6648. Hope everybody had a, a fantastic uh, weekend out there. Great to be back with you. Uh, Margaret Thatcher uh, news earlier, about 8 o'clock this morning or so. Margaret Thatcher had uh, passed away, you know, a form, a former uh, U.K. prime minister out there. Uh, we've got earnings season. That begins uh, today after the bell with Alcoa kicking uh, things off. So it's earnings season again. Uh, let's go take a look at the uh, stock charts here. If you're watching us on Tiger TV, thanks so much for doing that. Maybe you're listening in on your mobile device at tfnn.mobi. Maybe you're listening on the radio. Remember, this show will stream live, so you'll see the charts. You'll see them streaming live. If you go to the homepage of tfnn.com, over on the right-hand side, you will see the button. Got little three smart little phones out there. Click on that. 
This show will stream live to you. And remember, if you like to see this show here in HD, that means you can clearly see uh, the uh, charts that each of us here at TFNN provide. Just go join that Tiger's Den. You can do it for 30 days. Uh, you know, test drive it for 30 days. And, and while you're in there for 30 days, you're going to be surrounded by a great group of folks out there. So as we take a look at the uh, ES Mini 30-minute chart, that's what I've got up on my screen here right now. We can see as the market was making its move down on Friday after the uh, jobs report was released, you got this big wide-ranging bar here. This is a 30-minute chart we're looking at. So between 8.30 to 9 a.m., that's that wide-ranging bar to the downside as it was making its D point. It's A to B equals C, D point or eight point here on the es mini that we're starting with came in at 5 30 in the morning up at a price point of 1567.75 that was on april 3rd that was your a point your b point was where the market made a low coming down into the 4 p.m close on april the 3rd that level was 1544 swing points nothing more than where you see a significant change in trend clearly you can see that coming into that four o'clock session and then the uh, market makes a uh, bounce makes a retracement and it makes a retracement high. That becomes our C point. And that was at 1030 in the morning on April the 4th. A one-to-one. -one. A to B equals CD. Price projection, 1533.75 on the ES Mini 30. Coming into that 9 o'clock session, got down to 1533 and a quarter. Now, when you're coming down into a D point like that with a wide-ranging bar, typically means... Don't be buying that D point. In fact, there were no bulls that really showed up inside the ES Mini, not until really right here. This little move here, this little bounce now, you can see that on the uh, using that relative strength, relative weakness indicator at the bottom there, that was saying, okay, the market on the intraday, using the EKG of the uh, S&P futures contract of that 30-minute chart, that was telling us, all right, you're oversold. You need to work your way off. You need to work off that oversold condition, just like each of us, at least on uh, Thanksgiving. If we eat a little bit too much uh, food out there, you've got to work that off. Sometimes it's watching a football game. Sometimes it's watching Miracle on 34th Street. Sometimes it's just watching TFNN Tiger TV. In this case here, it worked its way off for about an hour or so. Decided to start moving a little bit higher. That first bullish candle actually came in here at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. It's this little guy right here. This was the first bullish candle, first bullish engulfing candle. Of course, all it was doing was wrapping around basically a little doji out there. So that was an easy uh, task. Now what we can see here is the ES Mini trying to get up into that point six one eight retracement. That 618 retracement I'm referring to is coming off of the high that we used to form our A to B equals CD point. So that's from the 1567.75 all the way down to the low that came in at that 9 o'clock session out there. That level 1554.50 has not been able to uh, get up there. Formed a little bit of a uh, bearish engulfing candle right here coming into the 8.30 a.m. time session. Uh, you can also see price moving towards that uh, overbought condition at that 8 o'clock time frame. Just working it off. Looks to me like, and we don't really have an A to B equals C up here yet that has uh, formed uh, you know because your eight point on this uh, would really be down at the low at nine o'clock and your uh, B point you know right now the A to B that uh, A to B equals CD that could form that I would say of any significance would be if we see a little bit of a market pullback from here your B point could come in at that eight o'clock session otherwise no real A to B equals CD up just simply retracement levels that you know we want to watch and that's 1555 to 1560 out there let's go peek in on the uh, daily charts here of the uh, futures contracts let's go see what we can find out here because monday was a, a pretty big day we'll go take well let's actually go over to the index first here and then we'll come back and take a look at the uh, daily futures chart uh, most of you know if we go take a look at the uh, s p 500 give me a moment here to pull that uh, chart up on the uh, screen should have been right there in front of me i thought i had that set up there it is right there in the lower left hand corner and as you know, if you've been listening in on the uh, 9 or 10 o'clock show, the importance of that price point level, 1546.72. On Monday at the open, S&P sliced through it like it was carry gold sweet Irish cream butter out there. But then the uh, bulls came in. They were able to push price up above 1546.72. In fact, a pretty decent way above 1546.72, getting up to 1553.28. That's where it closed. Reject that 1546.72 level until we get a close below it. And Friday was the opportunity for the Bears to truly take control. They blew that opportunity because the bulls were able to rush in there. They know the importance of 1546.72 as long as you are trading above that level. That keeps in 
in play because you're trading inside the swing point, that all-important swing point from October 11, 2007. That keeps in play 157609 out there, and uh, that's where we're at. So I know it's kind of been boring because, really, we've been talking about that number well. well certainly, we've been talking about that number well before the day, which is March 8th, when it broke above 15. Uh, 70, uh, 1546 72 uh, but nonetheless it's what we have to be monitoring it's really pretty simple when we take a look at the s p 500 so not a rejection of that that is not a hammer candle i heard somebody out there saying hey steve is that a hammer candle on the s p 500 and the answer is no it is not looks like a hammer smells like a hammer but there is not enough of a downtrend there in order for that to be a hammer candle quite frankly what that is that is a bearish engulfing or bear sash candle just take a look at the body of a candle that is the essence of price there folks the 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 wicks the shadows nothing more than the intraday extremes the extremes of the emotion be paying attention to those bodies of the candles first out there in this case here actually still a bearish engulfing candle and you had the s p actually close below that nine period that all important johnny cash basil chapman nine period ema out there let's go back and take a look though at the uh, futures contracts let's look at the uh, daily futures contracts because they too tell a, a story out here and that story is going to come from none other than mr and mrs weakness that's the russell 2000 daily now for those of you out there take a look at this chart you may be saying hey steve -o, i hear somebody saying that isn't that a hammer candle and you are absolutely right if that's what you were saying as you were taking a look at that russell 2000 futures now the russell 2000 has been the weak link in the uh, marketplace. Always important to take a look at strength and weakness. You can kind of let that uh, center of the uh, uh, center of that burger just kind of. It's important to take a look at the strength and weakness. In this case here, strength would be really the Dow that we'll take a look at. But here, let's take a look first at uh, weakness, and that's going to be the Russell 2000. And you got a hammer candle. So as it made its move down, the bulls truly rushing in there. And what that says, that's a really good thing. Well, it's a sort of good thing because the low there of that session from Friday, 907.20, you close below that. You know the expression. If you're long, you're wrong. Now, here's the key, though. You've got support level two really just below that support level one. That got blown away. We can erase that off of our screen here. That was as the uh, Russell 2000 got below that bearish engulfing candle high from February 20th. That price point was 933.20. But you've got right now, you've got that morning star support. That is down at the February 26th low of 892.60. So it closed below the hammer candle. Although that is significant, it would be significant when it happens, should it happen, and that price point is 907.20. It's not that far below before you run into your next area of support. Today, though, you've got a little bit of a bullish engulfing candle, real small-bodied candle out there, but the Russell 2000 looks like it probably wants to run up to that old level of support. We'll see if that acts as resistance, and that price point is going to be 933.20. If you're looking to short the marketplace, that might be the place for you to be paying attention to. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market, something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. You know, in the uh, media, you talk, uh, we hear about the... Uh, the fact that the uh, Japanese yen going to par right now, trading out at 98.57. If you're watching on Tiger TV, we're looking at a, a monthly chart here of the U.S. dollar Japanese yen currency pair. The uh, red uh, diagonal lines really showing you a uh, price channel, downward price channel that the uh, yen has been traveling in since uh, up the uh, time period here. Uh, going back to 1998, you can see that the price broke back inside that, that price trend. I say going to uh, par, hogwash is going a bit higher than that. Well, it'll hit the uh, top of this uh, rising or descending price channel. Exactly what price point, you know, it looks to me probably more around the 102 level, 101 to 102 level uh, before we see that uh, start to uh, back off. That is a strong move. Take a look at who is in control of uh, this thing, certainly the BOJ. And uh, But just take a look at that uh, move move up off of the uh, bottom there. Uh, you don't see that too often, but that is a straight line move. We saw it back here, back in the uh, 1995 time frame. That's over on the left-hand side of the chart. You can see for several months, in fact, it took all the way from, the, went from the time period of uh, May of 1995. This is a monthly chart that we're looking at all the way to uh, the end of February, February of 1996, before you saw nary a, a bear 
uh, try to uh, step in. In fact, if we go measure that, we can do that. Why don't we do that? Let's go take one of these tools that I've got out here. So let's take this tool, and we'll just measure that uh, price move. Now, we're just going to go ahead and drag this. I haven't done this, so let's just see what the results are. Drag this over here. And uh, so off of the bottom. So how about take a look at that? You're seeing the exact same price move. You want to talk about patterns that exist in a, a marketplace. Just start, you know, visually taking a look at the uh, chart. You know, Larry's book says trade what it is that you see out here. So if we take a look at just simply that first run before any bears really stepped in on the uh, yen, we're taking a look at going all the way back into 1995, all the way up into that time frame of February of 96. Happens to match the uh, move off of the bottom here that would take you right to the uh, top of that descending price channel that is out there. How about that? Pretty uh, cool. Uh, at least I think it's uh, cool out there. If we take a look at things here moving in the uh, marketplace, uh, you've got uh, Lufkin Industries being bought out by GE this morning, uh, getting a nice pop there. They close at about 64 bucks, trading at 87.93. Unipixels, UNXL, they closed at 27 bucks. They're trading at 32 dollars as well. Another nice pop. Apple, they closed at 4.23, trading at 4.24.75. No big uh, shakes out there. Obagi Medical, boy, they were on a, a tear last week. OMPI looks like a little bit of profit taking out here today. Uh, they close at twenty five forty two. Mers Pharma withdraws proposal to buy Obagi Medical. That's down uh, now trading at twenty three ninety out there. I see we've got some movement in the uh, GLD. That's trading a little bit lower. The uh, GLD closed at one fifty two eighty one, trading at one fifty two forty nine. So let's go peek in on uh, gold here. Let's go see what the gold contract uh, is doing as we take a look at the uh, metals market. Uh, the gold here getting down to a, a price level back on uh, Thursday, got down to 1539.34. Now, you know, the real low that uh, I was looking for was at 1535. Of course, if you're watching my chart, I had written down 1535 ish. So we got 1535 ish. The black horizontal line going across the screen here, you know, that's an area of support. Ideally, it goes back uh, when you're taking a look at the price as something is moving down into whatever stock chart you're looking at. Ideally, it goes and it hits the uh, swing point. Uh, however, I found that with the resistance and support lines, uh, not really test of swing points, you've got to be willing to move that line up and down. And so if I leave it parked right about there where we can see, I'll go ahead and blow this up here on the screen, maybe easier to follow. Uh, what you can see is you have that uh, descending price channel as well. There we go. That's a good size for it. You got the descending price channel. And so right at that intersection, by being able to move horizontal support up and down, you can see that really helped. And also getting into that over uh, sold uh, condition on April the uh, 4th out there. You had 209,000 shares. So coming down with some volume, but going against the most recent swing point down at that level, that was 259,000 contracts out there. So actually a little bit lighter volume when you take a look at what it most recently was going against. And that's that swing point that would take you all the way back here to May 30th. Then, now not a hammer candle, although it really looks and smells and tastes like a hammer candle. It still wasn't just a little bit too much of a uh, upper shadow out there, but close enough, close enough. And what you had occur on Friday was a big bullish engulfing candle. So we have seen a reversal, at least at this point in time. But you got to really dig down into the intraday chart to really understand what was going on inside gold. Still should be gold. Should, still should be pretty good support here at the 1535-ish, most specifically uh, the low of 15, uh, 1535, which really is your low going back to September 26, 2011. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. 
or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives you Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. With Market Insights, nothing is left to guessing. With the market at record levels, volatility is here, and now is a perfect time to take advantage of a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights. As recently as March 26th, Tom advised his subscribers to liquidate their four short-term equity holdings, closing out all four positions for a combined 15.9% profit. And on April 1st, Tom advised his clients to sell their longer-term position in AIG warrants, locking in more than a 40% profit in just that one trade. If you'd like to see the kind of newsletter Tom O'Brien sends out to his subscribers each morning, then sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of tfnn.com. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know that you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 till 6 p.m. Eastern, and you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right of the TFNN homepage. But if you don't have a mobile connection that keeps up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.MOBI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and call and radio talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed for trading in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information available, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. to the races we got the dow off 28 points right now trading out at 14,536 s and p trading out at 1552 down one point composite up four trading at 3208 russell 2000 up about three points trading out at 926 and uh, just a bit of change google's off five bucks apple we'll go take a look at uh, google in just a moment apple up three dollars and 46 cents microsoft down 10 ticks intel up 12 ticks Cisco up nine pennies. You have Lufkin Industries up twenty three dollars. That's the premium. GE placing on uh, I, uh, on that uh, entity. Icon Enterprises. Carl Icon IEP up three dollars and forty three cents. Unipixel. We mentioned that up up ten percent. That's up nicely. Two dollars and seventy seven cents out there. Pharma Cyclics uh, two dollars and forty five cents. That's up about three uh, percent. You've got. Uh, uh, Constellation Brands, uh, STZ, I believe that is uh, Stella Beer. What a wonderful beer that is. Up a buck uh, here right now. That's up 2.5% to the downside. Google leading the charge. Bally 
Technologies, BYI off a buck fifty nine, Netflix off a buck eighty one, Obagi Medical down a buck fifty, Johnson and Johnson, J and J off a little over a buck, Whole Foods Marketplace down ninety three cents, and F five Networks, which has really had some trouble, uh, down uh, about a buck right now. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. As we see here, it looks like the uh, ES Mini. Maybe we're going to see a little bit of the uh, B to C point uh, formed here of an A to B equals CD up. As we take a look at what could that uh, level be here, uh, you know, just simply move down to the 618 level. Let's actually, let me get rid of a few lines here on the screen, a little bit easier for you to follow at home as you follow along on Tiger TV even. So we'll go from that low that came in at that 9 a.m. open all the way up to the high put in here at about 8 o'clock this morning. Just the dead cat bounce 382 level takes you to 1544. 1540 would be your uh, point uh, 618 retracement. That would set up uh, a nice A to B equal, uh, a potential A to B equals CD. Uh, let's go take a look at what that would look like because we can draw the pattern here uh, in advance and what you would see. So even moving down just a tad, well, let's actually do, let's do two things here because you know, we're looking for a potential Gartley cell pattern that would uh, form. So that Gartley cell pattern, right? Okay, so you got a point seven eight six Gartley cell pattern that would form right around the uh, fifteen sixty. Now, what's needed there from the A to B equals CD side is you still need uh, more of a retracement than what it is that you've got here right now at fifteen forty seven. So you're looking at a you know maybe about a six point move down uh, town here just to set up that uh, B to C of a possible A to B equals CD up. That would be in the ES Mini. Let's go take a look at some of these stocks here, though, that are popping and uh, dropping. I mentioned we would go take a look at uh, at Google. G-O-O-G is the uh, ticker symbol. So let's go uh, see. i got to go hit the right button here. Let's go take a look at uh, Google because that, you know, was acting as a, a strong stock out there. And now what we're seeing is weakness. So we're going to put Google. I haven't looked at this. So let's go take a look at uh, Google. Gap down on uh, Friday's action here. You had some volume in it, did uh, about 3.4 million shares. So what we want to do is take a look at Google. Okay, that's that black line going across the uh, screen here. Let me move that. We're going to put this on a weekly basis because we did have a breakout on Google. So let's go put this on a, a weekly chart and uh, go see what it is that we're doing now. Let's come all the way back here. So the breakout, let me just take sure. So the breakout that I was noting on the chart was using the swing point high, taking you back into 2007. So November 9, 2007. We'll go ahead and put that line on the chart in black. Price point of that swing point high is 747.24. Now, I believe we broke out on volume, but let's go take a look at this and just make sure. Maybe it wasn't. Let's go take a look at it. No, it was not volume at all. So let's uh, let's really take a look at this. So the volume there for the week ended November 9, 2007, 53 million shares. Now, the first time up there uh, was uh, uh, attacked on September 28, 2012 with 22 million shares. You got a little close above it. Uh, stayed above it for just one more week on October 5th with 13 million shares and came back inside the range. Now, where it came back to was a, a previous, uh, also, like let's say, a, another breakout area, which was really set up by the, we'll call it the high of around January 8th, 2010. And so I, I've got a red line going across my uh, screen here. You had a bullish engulfing uh, candle right back here. This is the weekly chart, January 21st out there. We had a little shooting star uh, candle uh, that came in right here, actually set up a island reversal shooting star, uh, something that the uh, Nikkei did not do last night. But here's that shooting star candle. You gap down below it coming back in the week of uh, January 13th. So that set up a, a pretty decent area of uh, resistance out there. That area of resistance, once it got above, when you broke back below, came back below the 2007 highs, not you, but you being Google here, you can see what it did was it came back and it tested that previous line of resistance. That then became support. Now, what we're going to see happen here, looks to me like what we're going to see happen, is we're going to see, you can, as, as Google got above the weekly a resistance area, and that's that that's high from uh, again from September from from uh, November two thousand seven. Again, that number seven forty seven twenty four. You're at seven seventy six sixty five. You didn't didn't really get a test of that uh, breakout area. So it looks to me like what Google wants to do is come back and test that area. Now it didn't break out on volume as, for example, the uh, Microsoft uh, chart did not Microsoft the uh, Walmart chart uh, did. But we'll still see as Google is above this area whether it's going to stay inside. Uh, whether it's going to stay above the uh, uh, breakout, 
the 747-24 high. Uh, if it starts coming back there with some uh, volume, and he had volume uh, pick up last week, we really won't know till it gets down into that range, 747-24 out there, whether it's going to reject that level and start moving higher or whether it's going to come back inside the uh, bottom part of that range. Now, if it does come back inside there, that support level that was tested, which would be the swing point of November 16, 2012, that becomes game, and that's in that 636 level. But you got to do one thing at a time, and it looks to me like uh, now what it does look like to me because I see some uh, nice uh, price relative strength divergence out there. How about that? How about that for it uh, suggesting that it's going to back off? Looks to me like really what it will do is it will get back inside that uh, range uh, and uh, probably come back and test the November lows out there. That's around the 636 level. That obviously spells trouble for Paradise or trouble for the NDX 100 out there. Uh, let's continue to take a look at some of these uh, stock charts out here. Uh, let's go take a look at. Uh, uh, let's go take a look. What do we want to look at? Let's go take a look at Occidental Petroleum out here. Uh, this had formed a uh, very nice uh, Gartley buy pattern here. Uh, OXY, by the way, that is the uh, ticker symbol. So if you want to see a uh, successful Gartley buy pattern, uh, this one most certainly uh, is it. And that is an A to B equals CD down. Now the A to B equals CD down on this. Uh, you can use uh, you can use something different than what's painted in on this picture. But what we can see is it made a a point uh, you know between a point six one eight and seven eight six retracement. What it was also really doing as it was making this Gartley buy was coming into that January second uh, gap up level. Now that only had three point eight million shares, and on the way back here was five point eight million shares on March twenty sixth. But nonetheless, that becomes an important level of support. That little gap up January second level. Now, where is this likely to uh, head to? You know, on any type of Gertley pattern, buy or sell, you're going to take a look at your A, your A to uh, D uh, uh, price point projection or price point that it makes out here. You can see right now, gapping above the point three eight two level, which was eighty one sixty one, uh, looks like Occidental Petroleum headed for eighty four thirty four. Uh, that'll take you right into its most recent swing point. So now you want to do is check the volume as it moves up there, and that's on a daily chart. You're looking at five point three million shares. On March the 14th, uh, volume-wise on uh, Friday was 5.3 million shares. So far this morning, 550,000 shares. So it looks like it's coming into that area with decent volume, similar volume. That would really set up potentially a, a move up to the 86.27 level, the .786 retracement. So gapping up this morning, that is important out there to note. Uh, hasn't gotten up to 84.34, but still you want to be paying attention to that gap up. It is a second gap. We had a, edge. If you'd like to be part of the program, call us. We did have a, a gap here, a small gap. That was here. weird. We did have a small gap here on April the uh, 2nd as uh, well. So that's on Occidental Petroleum. Uh, let's take a look at some of these things here that are uh, popping and uh, dropping. Uh, let's go take a look at Johnson & Johnson, J&J. Let's go see what is behind the move here in J&J. It's trading off about 2%, so it's down about a buck fifty-three right now. Let me see here. Uh, losing ground, falling downgrade. So they had a little bit of a downgrade. So let's go uh, see what uh, this is doing and maybe where it is headed. It's got some, looks like some pretty decent volume here already in the early stages of uh, trading. So let's first start taking a look at the uh, daily chart. We can see the uh, gap down this morning. A little dark cloud cover candle as it made its high here on April the uh, 3rd. Looks like the uh, first area that this is headed to is going to be this high volume session on March the uh, 15th. Not a swing point or anything, just a high volume uh, trading session out there. Uh, your high is 79.24 on that day, 78. 62. Let's just draw a line. We'll come back to this uh, stock chart here, you know, tomorrow or the next day as we uh, pay attention to it. Come on. Click. There we go. There's the uh, click. And uh, we'll draw a line across here. And then we're going to take a look at the volume as this is coming back. So I'm going to just draw a line here amongst the high or low. And it's those high volume days you want to be paying attention to. I guess you could say it's coming down. You know, even though that trading session March 15th isn't a swing point, if I go over just a tad, March 19th most certainly uh, is. So it's going to be a question as to whether or not this uh, high volume bar out here from March 15th will hold 18 million shares. In trading thus far, though, 2.2 million shares and only 15 minutes of trading. So it's coming in hot. Now, where's the next high volume par bar? or par, depending on how you actually speak out here. Where's that one sitting here? And that uh, just sticks out, and that is October 18th, uh, 2012. That's 33 million shares all the way down to 72.74 out here. 
So now let's go take a look at some retracements. And let the retracement, I would say, the best one to start with is coming off of uh, June 4th. So we'll do June as well as the uh, November 16th level and see if we've got on Johnson & Johnson uh, any uh, anything uh, setting up here. What I mean by setting up is can we find a couple of uh, uh, swing points that uh, – We've got so uh, where we've got uh, uh, convergence of uh, uh, Fibonacci retracement levels. So the November sixteenth low out here in Johnson and Johnson, that's at the sixty-eight fifty-one level. So let's take a retracement off of that to the high that was uh, put in. We'll go ahead and uh, make that a little bit bigger. So it looks to me like so the point six one eight level takes it into seventy-four oh three, and the dead cat bounce off of the June fourth area would be seventy-four eighty-four. So it looks to me, <coughs> excuse me, like uh, that is where J&J may want to head to. Now, if it can get all the way down there, uh, and first it's got to break this high-volume bar here from March 15th. If it can get all the way down there, it seems to me like it will go ahead and test that high-volume day from October 18th out of the 72-74 uh, range. But one thing at a uh, time, uh, but that's what the uh, stock chart itself uh, looks like. Uh, let's go take a look at uh, Unipixel. That's up 9% here this morning. UNXL is the uh, ticker symbol, UNXL. Let's go see what uh, this is trying to travel into. So gapping up uh, this morning, uh, this stock chart here, interesting uh, stock chart. What does uh, UNXL actually do? Let me uh, pull this up. UN, I probably should be familiar with it. Well, there's always one way to get familiar with it. Uh, type it in here. So UNXL, their company profile, that uh, they uh, deliver performance engineered films to the display, touchscreen, and flexible electronics market segments in the U.S. Company offers fingerprint resistant and hard coat protective cover films. So I would say that is uh, something that all is uh, needed. Right now it's uh, moving up. Made a high. Had some volume off the high here, actually, uh, back on uh, April the uh, 1st, April Fool's Day. Moved down with 2.4 million shares. Trying to test. Maybe it has tested that actual downdraft day. That high was 31.40. Uh, so far today got up to 31.30. And uh, the actual high swing point is trading inside that. Let's pay more attention to that. That high swing point, 1.6 million shares. So at this stage, if you can get up above uh, 31.40, that was a high from April 1st, it'll certainly go test the uh, swing point high of May, March 21st out there at 33.91. Uh, if we take a look at uh, this here a little bit further back, let's put this on a weekly chart, and let's go see what UNXL did on a, a weekly chart out here, uh, and that's got certainly some volume off of the high and a, a bearish uh, candle out there. Uh, that So that is not necessarily uh, good news here just yet. So, so it's really set up a resistance, so it's really set up resistance with that little, you know, bearish engulfing candle. Yeah, a shooting star, really. This is a shooting star candle right here on uh, March the uh, 22nd, the week of March 22nd. So you've got some resistance for sure at $33.91 out there. Uh, let's go check in on Panera Bread. Panera Bread uh, to the uh, downside this morning. Uh, that had uh, that uh, was rising the last uh, several trading sessions. So let's go take a look at uh, Panera Bread. I don't see it on my screen. PNRA is the uh, ticker symbol, and it is trading off about a dollar forty-five. So really, not much of a uh, move to the uh, downside. That's about eight tenths of a uh, percent here uh, this morning. But uh, could be uh, setting up a, a little bearish uh, candle here. Uh, so let's go uh, pay attention to this. This would had broken out recently. So let's go take a look at uh, Panera Bread. And it made it above its highs. I'm going to take this back a little bit further left. I think it was an all-time high out here. So that is being tested. We'll put that in black. But let me pull this back further. Yeah, most certainly was. So, yeah, well, let me... I'll tell you what, we're going to be going to break here in a moment. just want to make sure, yeah, so that is all-time high. So when we come back, we'll just go take a look at uh, Panera Bread. It's testing its breakout area, much like when we were talking about Google out there. The breakout area was October 4, 2012. That price point high, 175.26, 336,000 shares. Broke above it with volume. We'll be right back. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. 
Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed down a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program. The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report, which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks, as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. Next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow is off 63 points right now. s and is off four. Composite down three. Small caps just slightly uh, red. Now, as we take a look at the ES Mini 30-minute chart, and then we'll go back and take a look at uh, Panera. But if we take a look at right now, you've got the ES Mini trading into the uh, swing point here from 9 o'clock on uh, Friday. 242,000 
contracts there. Uh, we still have four, uh, about five and a half uh, minutes left in this 30-minute uh, session. But coming back with light volume, 162,000 contracts going into uh, 242. So right now, I suspect that what we'll see is we'll see a move down to about that 1540, 1537 to 1540 level, setting up the uh, B to a C, quite frankly, of an A to B equals CD up. And then that would be uh, a, a likely uh, sell point out there. Of course, you've got to be cautious because of the rejection of the uh, October 11th uh, swing point out there. In fact, if we go take a look real quickly here at uh, strength, you've got the strength. I'm going to switch over to the Dow. It's off 53 points right now. But I'll just switch over into the uh, daily future contract here real quickly. We can take a look at that because we, I'll take a look at the index charts during the Money Masters show. But we take a look at the uh, resistance now support level. That's going to be the high for March 20th, which was 14,476 and even with yes, uh, Friday's uh, push lower all the way down to a low of 14,361, uh, the uh, Dow futures still managed to close above that support level, closed out at 14,493. Trading below it again this morning, so maybe just a portion, a test of the uh, wick out there. Looks like a hammer, smells like a hammer, but that is not a hammer candle out there. You still have to respect any candle like that where you're just simply able to, the bulls uh, are able to just continue to push higher. That's why that shooting star candle is all also so important. In fact, if we go take a look at the, uh, you know, we were looking at the shooting star on the weekly chart for uh, Google out there, and of course it gapped down. On Friday, we were taking a look at the uh, Nikkei. The Nikkei, you know, had uh, went ahead and it, it, it was the only uh, index that actually had traded higher. If you would have just taken the number, you would have said, hey, that is a, a great looking uh, uh, that was, you know, without looking at a chart, that that was great. I said be cautious because it formed this big shooting star. Uh, now, all that the Nikkei actually did last night, and I'm not saying it's going to move lower, but all that it actually did last night, the high of Friday was uh, 13,225.62. Got up to 13,225.22. So we're going to see it probably either gap up or we're going to reject that area because it's, it uh, stopped just shy you know, by a few pennies out there. So uh, you just, we'll just have to wait and see what happens in the uh, markets out here. But just like we were looking at on the uh, Google chart, the shooting stars, you had to give the benefit of the doubt. You had to get a you had really two things going on, both bullish and bearish. And we saw that really take place in Friday's trading session out here. The bullish part of this candle formation was the mere fact that you had a gap up. The bearish part was that the uh, bulls lost track of that trading session all the way through the entire trading session with that very important shooting star. So we'll see how the uh, Nikkei will play out up here. Nikkei also in the over uh, bought uh, territory. I'll go quickly back here to Panera Bread. Uh, Panera, we're taking a look at that. Actually broke out over a, a daily swing point high uh, with volume. And that was the high of October the 4th, 2012. That level, 177.97 out there. Uh, I'm sorry, 175.26. That had 336,000 shares. Broke out above it with 1.2 million shares on April the 4th. And then on Friday, stayed above with 870,000 shares. All that's happening right now is a, a test to see how real that breakout is. If it comes back down inside there, well, Panera could go all the way back down to the bottom of the range, 154. But right now, looks like a real breakout inside Panera Bread. Folks, if you're off to start your day, have a, a marvelous Monday. And always remember this. You have an amazing power within yourself. And that power is so strong that it create a life of abundance, cure incurable diseases, build billion-dollar businesses, paint magnificent masterpieces, but most of all, create fantastic loving families. Thanks so much for being a part of the TFNN family. Have a great Monday, folks. Look forward to seeing you soon. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability, because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today. 
Because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away.